Welcome to this next video where I'm going to go over how to render the scene that we have created in the past videos. Uh, so if I want to go to my rendering options, it's this camera right here known as render appropriately. Some of the important parts of render are you have your dimensions 1920 by 1080 and you can change this if you want to go with a high resolution maybe something like 4096 by 2160 and it's the generally the same aspect ratio but a much higher pixel density and uh, I'm going to stay with uh, 1920 by 1080 so it doesn't take forever and then um, this is compression so you know you can make this 1% and that's 1% of the resolution that you specified and that way you can do a test render. If I were to do a test render at 1% I would simply come up here and say render, render image and you can see it renders very quickly and 1% resolution is you know nothing so I'm going to uh, maybe bring this up to something like 25% and render image and there I've got kind of a rough rendering of what my image will look like so I'm going to turn this back up to 100% now the other thing if I say render image and notice it it takes longer to render Yeah, the, the thing to notice is uh, we're looking quite grainy you know there's kind of a grainy texture to the scene and uh, the way to fix that I think is by samples so I come down here and sample notice my preview is at 10 samples my render is at 10 samples well uh, a true end quality uh, rendering is about a thousand samples. You can even maybe go up to 2,000. I mean, you can type in whatever, whatever number you want, but what's realistic is probably one to 2,000 ish. And um, again, you have your transparent option if you want your background to be, you know, a transparent, but that's not applicable here because we have planes that block the empty background. So film transparent. Um, those are generally the settings that I change from default when I render. And um, let me show you what the difference is between this and something like a thousand samples. Notice we have different slots, and so I can choose slot two and re render into this slot so I can make a comparison with my past render. So I'm going to change to render slot two and render this just at a different sample rate. And I'll fast forward this so you can see the difference. And clearly I stopped this render because my bottle does not look very transparent. So I'm going to go back and, and fix that because I want my bottle to look more glassy than it is. Uh, so I'm going to switch back to 3D view. And we'll highlight the bottle. And go back to material. And we'll change the surface roughness down to something like 0.05. And there, there we've got a much better transparency. So let's go ahead and render that because it'll look a lot more realistic than this uh, sort of semi-solid looking thing. Uh, so we had a surface roughness issue with the glass. Let's go ahead and re-render that. Okay, I stopped this next render because if you look, you can see there is a bunch of white dots in the uh, rendering. This is an issue known as fireflies, and it's very small computational errors as lighting is processed. Uh, so the, the number one things that cause fireflies are low samples, and since we're running a thousand, we know that we have enough samples to prevent fireflies. And the other thing is small lights. So if I go back to my 3D scene here, um, I have some small lights. Um, so if I right click on my light, my size is 0.1. I'm going to change that to a size of 3. And if I go to my 3D view, there's um, one consequence is we're not quite as bright. And so I'm going to turn my brightness up to something like 4000 to compensate for the larger light size. And then if I go to my sun, I've got the same thing, 0.1. I'm going to change that to a, a size of 3. And notice we, we are dimmer, and that's okay. I think I'll just make my spotlight a little bit brighter, something like 7,000. 
And now notice the fireflies are largely gone. We still have a few that develop, and that's uh, due to the low samples in the um, sample render. But this should take care of the fireflies that we're seeing. So I'm going to go ahead and re-render, hopefully for a final time. And that's how you can clear some errors that you might see. And I stopped this to figure out why I still have had fireflies. And I figured out there was a setting that I always have on, but somehow got turned off. So if you still struggle with fireflies, you can go come to settings and choose multiple importance. Likewise, likewise with uh, rendering settings, if you choose the camera and come down to, uh, I'm going to close some of these up so you can see it a little bit better. You choose light paths. Um, it's important to have filter glossy as well, which can prevent some of these fireflies and change that to 0.5. And that's especially important for uh, glass and other refractive materials. If filter glossy doesn't work, you can also come into integrator presets and choose uh, no caustics. Okay, so this is our final rendering, and of course this UV image editor isn't full um, resolution, so when you get one you like, you can simply um, save the image by simply saying image, save as image, and then opening it up and viewing our final render you can see we've got uh, a little bit of roughness on the surface and that's not due to the rendering engine that's due to the STL format there's just no way of getting around a roughness when importing uh, some geometry into Blender and there's some mild fireflies which uh, can be tuned out uh, but I think that's good enough for my needs so uh, that is the final image and uh, hope you enjoyed this video if it was helpful please subscribe and check out all visuals for you as well. See you next time.